Hello everyone and welcome back to computer vision lecture series. This is lecture 11 part 2 and this is also our last recording for the computer vision lecture series this semester. So let's just get on with it. Uh, in the last uh, recording we saw how we can uh, create a dense set of 3D points from multiple scans or from different depth images and we almost uh, saw how we could easily register uh, all the point clouds in a, in such a way that we can get a final nice uh, uh, consistent uh, surface reconstruction from the point clouds or from different multiple scans. So one, the first problem of uh, surface reconstruction was solved that is to have a nicely registered uh, point clouds. The second problem we focus now is to convert this point cloud from uh, the registered point clouds to a surface basically to create a surface uh, from these point clouds uh, an example is shown here where you have on the left hand side um, a very well registered point cloud of an animal and on the right hand side a surface reconstruction from those points now the simplest measure uh, way to create those surfaces is to just choose randomly three points three neighboring points and interpolate a surface or fit a surface or a plane between them and create um, a surface uh, however this can be very tricky because mainly these registered points are not always uh, very well registered and the scans are not very well not very good uh, secondly there, are, there could be a lot of outlier outliers like noise or um, incorrectly registered points and therefore ideally we should not take this approach because if we take this approach we get a uh, surface reconstruction as uh, shown in on the right hand side which is not the best because there is a lot of discontinuities there are a lot of um, mismatches uh, in the surfaces yeah, especially in the space regions or where there are lesser um, density of point clouds or meshes it's not easy to reconstruct the surfaces from um, the sparse set of points that we have there and therefore this method is uh, trivial and uh, not uh, preferred the second approach is to use implicit functions now what are implicit functions um, an implicit function can be any function which we define such that uh, when you fit it across some uh, set of points or uh, model some set of points all the points lying inside the function uh, will be considered uh, greater than zero uh, inside as well as uh, the, those points which are lying outside this um, function value is considered are considered um, uh, less than zero so for example in this case we fit an implicit function uh, along the boundary points here based on the color codes and uh, we extract the zero set so all those points which are lying along the points of the function where where its value is zero we extract this uh, function and essentially what we have done here is uh, out of all these points lying on this 2d grid we have created a surface which uh, runs along a zero set of the implicit implicit function and at the end we get a kind of a representation of uh, the surface in the in this 2d grid so extracting the zero surfaces of implicit function has been uh, very well studied and known in graphics specifically and also in visualization because you in such uh, areas you begin by defining sparse set of points and then you interpolate the surfaces between them and therefore uh, the use uh, usefulness of implicit functions is quite uh, more rampant in such uh, areas of application uh, so let's uh, look into a bit deeper into what uh, implicit functions actually mean uh, but for that we start with a problem on 2d surfaces to describe uh, how to how to describe 2d curves basically so uh, we define isolines and polygons uh, sorry we define polygons um, from isolines now what are isolines um, let's say we have a function which is um, a 2d function x and y and the third value is uh, representative of uh, the third value of the function represents um, uh, how do you say the surface or depth or it could be in our case for example of surface reconstruction when we have this point clouds we can consider the third value to be uh, the distance value 
or the depth value. So basically it's a bivariate function where uh, you map from uh, 2D function values to one dimensional function values. And isolines is a such set of points uh, such that those is collection of such set of points uh, for which um, the value of this function is a constant. Uh, let's look into it what we actually mean by this. So let's say we have a, a grid of values or a grid of points, spatial points. Uh, for each point, there is a particular value associated with those points. So we need to find an isoline that passes through uh, the function value equals to zero. So what we do is we sample function on this uniform grid. Uh, in our case, we consider uh, four set of points like, and we call them as a cell. And we consider all this, uh, an example is shown on the left and all the vertices uh, have their associated values. Now, this point P0 is uh, greater than zero <coughs> and uh, P1 is uh, less than zero. Uh, if 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 we linear if we assume a, a linear um, uh, if we assume that our uh, implicit function is linear and varies uh, smoothly, uh, we can always find a point midway uh, between these two between in this line p zero p one such that its value is zero, uh, and this is a direct result of the mean value theorem. Uh, so assuming that this function is linear, we can always find such points which are uh, uh, which have zero values. So for this particular cell, there are two such points uh, on this edge, on the top edge and on the right edge. For the bottom edge on the, and on the left edge, uh, both these points uh, of these segments are uh, above zero values and therefore mean value theorem cannot be applied there and therefore it's not easy to find um, the function value equals to zero. Whereas for the top edge and on the right edge, we can find such points. And then what we do is essentially we connect these intersections and uh, we compute or repeat this for all the cells. So uh, remember that cells were considered by considering four set of points in the 2D grid. Uh, this is a very ideal representation of 2D set of points. Uh, usually you do not have these cells in the square shape. You have to choose four random points or four uh, neighboring points in the 2D grid such that you can uh, interpolate between them and then you connect the, uh, you create these intersections where uh, your implicit functions value is zero um, to generate these isolines. And at the end, when you connect all these isolines, you are able to generate the final um, polygon surface of your, uh, uh, this 2D grid of points. There is also uh, trivial cases. Uh, for example, in this case, let's say uh, all these points are um, uh, lying on this isoline, which have uh, the function value of zero. Such um, configurations are ambiguous because this constitute um, a surface in itself. Uh, but we are not looking for such um, surfaces, right? This is uh, this cell is uh, part of a larger point cloud. And therefore, we want to only inter interpolate one of one value from the set of all these points, or an edge um, that is that can be connected, or it is part of this isoline. And therefore, for such uh, ambiguous configurations, we just uh, take an average value of or the central value uh, for this surface. Um, so this is a very uh, another ideal case shown. Uh, it is possible that if you take an average value, it will be zero here. Uh, but it is not always the case. Uh, however, for example, if you convert minus two to minus one uh, and two to three, even in that case, we will get this um, ambiguous configuration. Uh, however, its average value will be a bit different. So we have to be careful about this. Uh, in this case of surface representation from isolines, uh, we have considered 2D grid of points, okay? And for every four set of uh, points from this 2D grid, uh, there are uh, almost 16 possible um, intersects and that we can draw like uh, like this there are uh, 16 different uh, combinations possible how for example uh, one line that goes from top edge to the right edge another goes from right edge to the bottom edge such combinations of um, isolines uh, there are 16 combinations however uh, due to symmetry uh, this combination can be lowered down to 
um, uh, can be decreased and instead of always computing this or interpolating this um, line segments we can use a lookup table to uh, extrapolate uh, sorry to interpolate between these two uh, points so with the similar uh, idea uh, for isolines we are uh, we, we also want to cons uh, compute isosurfaces because uh, isosurfaces will be computed for uh, points in 3D plane. So in our case, the point clouds that we have are 3D point clouds and for each of, of those point cloud uh, points in the point cloud, uh, there is a value associated with it. So we define a sample, sample function on a uniform grid. So we uh, assume a neighborhood of such point clouds to be uniform across and then we sample a function in, the, in that uniform grid. And for each cell in that grid, it is const it constitutes uh, a cube which has eight diff eight vertices. Uh, we mark those corners whether they are smaller or light larger ISO values from our implicit function. Uh, like in the previous case, we had four uh, points in our cell. In this case, there are eight points or eight vertices, and therefore there are two fifty six different combinations. However, due to symmetry and other uh, trivial con configurations that we saw before, uh, this number can be reduced to 15. And at the end, uh, all we have to do is use uh, a particular combination and a lookup table to find the particular triangulation. Uh, or, uh, and adjust the vertex positions along, uh, according to the linear interpolation. So, um, marching cubes table is this set of uh, surfaces or this set of uh, uh, interpolations between this um, for every cell grid. So when you consider each and every cell grid, uh, depending on the uh, points which have higher or lower value of uh, um, higher or lower value as compared to the implicit function, you can use this set of um, um, surfaces or the splines. Uh, to to interpolate the uh, it uh, interpolate the cube or represent the cube in an isosurface form. Uh, all you have to do is look up use a lookup table or you can use real intersection and find the exact surface um, by fitting uh, a plane across those uh, intersections. Uh, so the idea is simple: generate an implicit surface description from the point cloud. And using this surface, uh, generate surface using a marching cubes uh, algorithm. And this is called implicit surface uh, reconstruction. Uh, Hop in 92 proposed a simpler, a simpler algorithm for uh, using or finding this implicit functions. So what he proposed is uh, a sign distance function uh, at P can be computed for uh, a given point P by uh, in, in two steps. First is to find a closest point Q with a normal n. So um, uh, we, we saw before how to find normal for a particular point. We consider a set of points which are near, which are k nearest neighbors or um, some set of points which are near, closer to Q in some distance metric, and we use that to generate a surface. And the normal to that surface would be considered normal to the point Q. So this normal uh, is associated with Q. Uh, P could be any value. Uh, of course, it necessarily does not, should not be a part of the neighborhood of Q. And then we compute a distance as distance to the tangent plane of Q. So when we know uh, the normal to Q, we also know the tangent to this uh, point, and we compute the distance uh, value as the distance to this tangent plane of Q instead of a direct uh, L2 distance or L3 distance. Uh, sorry, in uh, what I mean by L2 and L3 is Euclidean distance in a coordinate form. Instead of that, we define the uh, distance in uh, as uh, this function. And we evaluate this function on a uniform grid uh, or for a particular volume. Similarly, after that, uh, we run a matching cube algorithm, which we saw in the previous slides, on this volume to extract these ISO surfaces. Uh, so here is an example. So P is a point for which you want to find the distance of uh, sign distance function and you consider this point Q and it's associated normal and this is the tangent plane passing through Q. We compute this value as the sign distance function for uh, P and 
for all such uh, we run this kind of uh, this algorithm across all the points in a uniform uh, in a particular volume uh, assume as uh, and our assumption is that it's a uniform grid and then we run a matching cube algorithm on this volume to extract all the isosurfaces and therefore we are generating isosurfaces out of this set of point clouds and essentially we have done uh, a surface reconstruction when we re replace the, the values with the isosurfaces and uh, Im very importantly um, hop has introduced uh, using gradients or normals in this case uh, into the calculation of surface um, um, so in calculation of the surfaces and therefore his method works very well uh, here we can see the results of uh, his method uh, on the left hand side for each set of images you see the final aligned rig, um, um, aligned point clouds uh, very well aligned point clouds and then uh, to recreate the surfaces on the using hops method it uh, on the right hand side is, are the examples they're quite nice uh, here is a typical example where depending on the sparsity of the point clouds uh, um, the surfaces are recovered in a bit different manner uh, this is a very good example in which we see that uh, even if the sparsity is too low of the point clouds uh, using hops method uh, it is able to recreate very nicely uh, the surfaces of this, this particular uh, artifact some analysis of hops method so fx is a function such uh, defined in the neighborhood um, of uh, with, with respect to qi and if qi is the point closest to x uh, fx is, is piecewise linear uh, defined on the Voronoi diagram of the input points what we mean here is um, this points that you are seeing uh, these lines are defining the Voronoi diagram of the input points um, it's not uh, directly included in our syllabus the Voronoi diagram but uh, roughly what it means is that um, which uh, these are um, like a polygon shapes which separate these points in uh, different regions in such a way that the minimum distances or the minimum angular distances between them is maximized so uh, using that we create this Voronoi diagrams and uh, for each of these um, points uh, these are discontinuous along the edges of this uh, Voronoi edges whereas they are continuous along the, um, uh, the they are piecewise con uh, this function f is piecewise con continuous only discontinuous in the, uh, in the vicinity of the or, or on the Voronoi ed edges and once we are computing this fx values fx uh, function for each and every uh, point then after using matching cubes algorithm we can recreate or join these points in this manner and therefore we have reconstructed the surface from this uh, point cloud using hops method um, the advantage of hops method is that it's easy to implement it works well on clean data if uh, the points are very well sampled no noise no outliers so on and so forth um, however it is uh, still in a, a linear approximation and therefore uh, it is piecewise linear and it will always cause uh, piecewise linear artifacts uh, if the data is undersampled. So if it is really highly, uh, if the data is very sparse, for example in this case as we saw, it was still able to recreate nicely the surfaces but there are a lot of issues with the finer details of this uh, final surface. Similarly here if you go or zoom into the surfaces um, the surfaces that are extrapolated uh, do not have nice uh, textures so if your data is missing or uh, there is a lot of noise in it or it's not uniformly sampled um, then it will uh, not work as well ops method um, Okay, partition, partition of unity implicits. So what are unity implicits? To evaluate uh, the implicit function at some point, uh, we look for the k nearest samples uh, xi. We compute their distance as before and we blend this based on their distances using this uh, function value. So uh, what is partition of unity implicits is essentially uh, using this um, 
distance uh, regularization metric kind of and then we are uh, influencing our final result so that in such a way that uh, if we can generate a, a smoother result out of this uh, unit implicits okay this is another example of uh, range images of using su uh, surface reconstruction from uh, depth images basically so uh, in this case we have a different uh, different set of uh, depth uh, point clouds for example in kinect when you um, the depth sensor will return you uh, different depth values and b based on the uniformity of the depth values we have different surfaces so we define sine distance field as implicit function in this case uh, it is a relation to the distance and the surface so all those surfaces which have the same distance or depth uh, are considered uh, one value and uh, negative value or negative distance will be considered as inside and positive value will be considered as outside uh, out of this sine distance field uh, what we do is then we store this function on a 3D grid and then uh, store only values uh, nearby the surface. So for each depth image, uh, we have uh, from the Kinect depth sensor or any other depth sensor, it forms a part of the surface. And for each uh, depth image in its neighborhood surface, we define a sine distance function. If its value is already set, we merge it. Otherwise, we smooth out to remove the noise. And then finally reconstruct using the marching cubes uh, algorithm. This is an example of Buddha reconstruction. Uh, you should look at these two. Uh, so these are direct links to Connect Fusion, but um, I would recommend you to read some nice papers that related to uh, reconstruction using Connect uh, sensors. These are just for references and they are not really so useful because it's, it directs you to a generic page. Anyways, this brings us to the end of our computer vision uh, lecture series for summer semester 2020. Uh, I hope that you understood and enjoyed and learned something at the end of this lecture and in, at the end of this course as well and um, i wish that it has given you enough motivation or and intuition into how vision techniques work and how many different algorithms can be repurposed there are some uh, inspirations from graphics some inspirations from math so computer vision ha is a field which is uh, an amalgamation or um, you know like a, a motley of different methods from different fields and it is uh, and it is this quality of this field that is making it very interesting is that even a simplest idea in um, geometry or uh, surfaces uh, dealing with surfaces in uh, math or it, it could be even in graphics which is a completely different field uh, we can use those ideas of e even simple ideas like uh, using a particular type of sensor and things like that and we can use those ideas and um, try to solve problems, uh, vision problems. And therefore computer vision is very exciting and it will always be exciting no matter whether deep learning is at its peak or not. Um, if you have taken deep learning lectures, you will know that most of the problems that deep learning is trying to solve is uh, vision problems. Um, uh, of course, there are, and the, there are other fields uh, where deep learning is applied uh, extensively these days, uh, specifically in data science, um, data sciences in uh, as well as in uh, number series analysis for stock market predictions for predictions of uh, next word in the text so natural language processing also has a huge uh, usage of deep learning techniques but what i wanted to say is that uh, deep learning is a method uh, or a framework which is using its um, mm, algorithm to improve on the computer vision uh, pipeline the computer vision methods or computer vision problems are still there uh, a lot of problems to work on they are, we are still not at state of the art and even if we see that the state of the art methods we should look at uh, a bigger picture always is that method really useful or not uh, or what have we learned from applying that method in our real life can we use that uh, learning in some other domain 
can we really solve some problems or is it just too narrow uh, to solve a real world problem how can we generalize this method across uh, different data sets or uh, different scenarios different situations intensity of light camera capturing techniques there are, there are a lot of variables involved and therefore it makes computer vision a uh, really exciting and growing field and um, i wish that um, you have learned something and if it gives you enough motivation that you can continue in this direction to pursue um, problems or try to solve problems in vision domain and I would like to invite you to take a look at my profile and uh, see the projects involved that I am involved in and my colleagues uh, in the computer vision group at pattern recognition lab. We are extensively working in a lot of domains and uh, I hope that that gives you enough uh, motivation to uh, apply for uh, or start working in different problems. Okay. Thank you very much and uh, have a nice time and all the best for your oral exams.